Hello, fellow writers, and welcome to this edition of The Pen Mother. Today is opposite day, which should mean that it isn't opposite day, but it is. Opposites, good, bad, happy, sad, energetic, listless, smart, stupid. I'll probably do a whole thing on the trope of opposites attract, but that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how to create depth and complexity in your characters by allowing them to do what is called playing the opposites. This is an idea that I picked up in acting classes way back when, and to me it is one of the easiest ways to make a character instantly more compelling. It goes something like this. When a character is angry, have them appear to be happy, laughing, smiling, or maybe they're furious, but they are still and calm. So calm, it's terrifying. The worst psycho killer is much scarier if he is not a deranged lunatic, but an intelligent, refined, and educated genius. Hannibal Lecter, or conversely, a funny trickster, the Joker. Despair feels much more desperate when it's masked in laughter and smiles. Fighting tears is usually more moving than actually crying them. When you have a character who is feeling a big emotion, Experiment with them doing their level best to express the opposite emotion. A beaten wife assures her husband that she loves him right before she shoots him in the face. A terrified young soldier puts on a brave face right before he throws the grenade across enemy lines. What your character is feeling should rarely match what they are saying and doing. Because we do this in real life. How many times have you heard someone receive a compliment only to say, Oh, it's nothing. Or, no, I'm not. All the while, they're smiling and feeling totally smug. Humility is definitely playing the opposites. We feel pride, but we feel it's inappropriate to feel pride, so we hide our pride with humility. Humans have been trained in many cultures to hide their feelings, especially fear and sadness. And fear and sadness are the two emotions that we writers depend on for our living. You want to have your character break down and cry? Do it at a moment when something really good happens to them. Do it at a moment when they are finally safe and have nothing to cry about. Here's a great example of playing the opposites, and it happens to be one of my favorite movie moments of all time. This is a huge spoiler alert, by the way. In the movie Billy Elliot... There is a moment toward the end of the film where Billy has auditioned for a big ballet school in London. He has danced passionately, but it's clear that he's a yokel with a rough, untamed kind of talent that's in stark contrast to the other more refined hopefuls. So through the movie, we know that his entire world hinges on getting into this dance academy, but the audition leaves the audience wondering if he'll be accepted or not. He gets the letter from the academy. We don't know if it's a rejection or an acceptance, and the director doesn't tell us in the scene. Billy reads the letter, collapses in a chair, and sobs, sobs like his world is coming to an end. The next scene is several years later, and Billy Elliot is graduating from the dance academy. He got in. And not only is he good, he's a superstar, and he sets an example for all of the other dancers. Billy falls into the chair in that scene and sobs because that's what happens in real life. When something amazing happens to us, when something huge and overwhelming happens that will change our lives for the better, most of us panic or cry or fall silent or worry. We play the opposites. So if you are getting feedback that your dialogue is too on the nose or that your characters feel flat, Take whatever they are feeling and experiencing and have them behave the exact opposite way. See if that doesn't add dimension to the moment and depth to your writing. Wait, does that make every day opposite day?